The golden age is before us, not behind us. William Shakespeare. My favorite class that I took at Furman was in the spring of my sophomore year. It was called History of the Golden Age, a humanities course that didn't qualify for my major or any GBRs, but was just one of those courses I had the privilege to take under the encouraging umbrella of a liberal arts education. We studied plays by Moliere, artwork by Gustav Klimt, and the historical accuracies in Mad Men. Our course objective was to define the golden age, identify its benchmarks and its triggers, and ultimately its demise. As impressionable young adults in our early 20s, my peers and I are not strangers to the nostalgic sentiments of our parents and older siblings. College is the best four years of your life. You'll try new things, meet all kinds of people, and feel truly independent, even if that last part is just an illusion. <laughs> Simply put, our time in Berlin has been deemed a golden age, if not the golden age in our lifetime. I investigated some of my old class notes to gauge just how sincerely we graduates should commiserate our loss today. After all, if we are to listen to those older and wiser, today marks the end of our golden age, and I am going to help you properly adjust. So, what constitutes the golden age? Freedom of thought and expression are crucial, as is a mechanism for an exchange of ideas, whether a salon in Enlightenment Age Paris or the blog comment section of your freshman year seminar. An influx of outsiders aids in expanding ideologies and creating new social norms. That's how you know you lucked out when you were randomly assigned a roommate from New Jersey or rural Tennessee. Lastly, the ideas that characterize an age must have longevity. They influence culture and give you context to the history of the future. You must aspire to contribute towards a legacy of hope, as Dr. Davis suggested in her recent inaugural speech. Alas, a golden age is neither stable nor sustainable. The age offers no promise of pleasantry. As hungry <coughs> and foolish students for the past four years, we have often come across an idea that was foreign and uncomfortable. Ideas that invaded our four wall classrooms, intersected with our personal lives, and delivered us here, today, at our commencement senior send-off champagne toast. <laughs> <laughs> what ideas did you come up with at Furman? Did you decide to become a doctor, or a teacher, or an artist? What did you get out of staying up all night studying, or writing a 10 page paper, or maybe failing an exam? Was it worth it? In your time, during the Furman era, did you learn how to be a better friend? Did you learn empathy? Did you decide what kind of person you wanted to be? How do you decide how you would use the past four years to shape your future? Sapere odd, dare to know. Let Immanuel Kant's enlightenment motto be your life path today. Class of 2015, let's commit to challenging ourselves dare and seek knowledge and not retract into the very alive golden age of Netflix streaming, Tinder swiping, and 140 character news. It is true that this golden age we shared together is coming to a close, but it has laid down the groundwork for all the golden ages in our future. After four years, the view from where we sit today is pretty nice, but I know there's a peak in our future. Although, they do say history repeats itself, so I'm not starting off afternoon power naps or 10 p.m. caffeine boost just yet. I'm proud of you, and please allow me to offer my sincerest congratulations. Thank you for a wonderful and golden four years.